Two years ago, Nigeria's economy was, was revalued and it was found to be the biggest uh, economy on the continent. This week, Nigeria just released uh, economic growth figures showing that in 2016, its economy contracted. This is the first year-long recession in 25 years. Nigeria is essentially an oil economy. The fact that the oil price has fallen by about half is central to this slump. Compounding the impact have been some fundamental economic policy mistakes committed by the president of the country, Muhammadu Buhari, who came in two years ago. He previously ruled the country in the mid-1980s as a military leader, and at that time he also faced a falling oil price and economic shock. Unfortunately, he's making the same mistakes today as he did then. Mr. Buhari's main economic policy has been trying to peg the Nigerian currency, the Naira, to the US dollar. Maintaining this peg against the dollar means that its exports are just too expensive, so it can't compete on global markets. At the same time, its local manufacturers are not able to produce things uh, cheaply enough to compete internally with, with the cheap imports that have been flooding the country. What's really interesting about this is that President Buhari is not even in, in the country at the moment during this economic crisis. He's been in London since more or less the middle of January. What started out uh, ostensibly as a holiday now turns out to have been medical treatment. In the meantime, his vice president, Yemi Osinbanjo, has stepped into the fray and is effectively running the country. The vice president uh, has a much more progressive stance on the economy. He's allowed the currency to start easing. He's also embarked on some reforms aimed at encouraging investment and making it easier to do business in Nigeria. There is an uneasy calm at the moment. As long as Buhari is still getting medical treatment and as long as his vice president is very competently running the country, everyone seems to be happy. Perhaps the best thing for the country right now might simply be for uh, Mr. Bahari to take a long convalescence uh, before returning. I want to say that even if you forget to call me Vice President, you must not forget that I'm a High Chief. <laughs> Your Excellency, the Governor of Bielsa State, and my dear brother, the Right Honorable Henry Seriaki Dixon. Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Bielsa State, Retired Rear Admiral John S. Jonah, the former governor of Bielsa State, Chief Timperi Silva, <laughs> members of the National Assembly present here today, His Royal Majesty King Alfred Dieter Spieth, Chairman Traditional Rulers Council, and other members of the Traditional Rulers Council, 
present today. Honorable ministers, advisors, members of the Federal Executive Council, the Right Honorable Speaker, Bayelsa State House of Assembly, all of the members of the Executive Council of Bayelsa State, great sons and daughters of Bayelsa State, guests, members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I'm extremely pleased and honored to be here today visiting the warm and friendly and hard-working people of Bayelsa State. It's a, privilege, it's a privilege to be hosted in the Jerusalem of the Joe Nation and to interact with a people whose rich ancestry is notably mine, especially since even the pre-colonial era, with a determined quest for fairness and justice. I'm here as an emissary of our president, President Muhammad Buhari, who after the visit of the leadership of the Pan-Delta Forum in November 2016, decided that we must undertake visits to engage the leadership and people of all the oil-producing communities, to hear them, to seek to understand their problems and concerns firsthand, and to offer to those communities in the Delta region a new vision and a new compact. It is this great state of Bielsa, precisely at Oloibiri, that the history of oil exploration in Nigeria began. It is here that this great source of the wealth of our nation was discovered. And this oil became the source of 70% of national revenues and 90% of our foreign exchange earnings. Over 50% of non-oil revenues is determined by oil revenues. But for the people of the historic Oloidori and the many oil-producing communities in this state, and the Niger Delta region, the blessing of oil paradoxically became a curse, or at best, a burden. Their means of livelihood, fishing and farming, has consistently been destroyed by pollution. Worse still, huge resources earned over the years have simply disappeared. The roads, schools, hospitals, and social amenities that all wealth should have provided are either not there or they are patently inadequate. The majority of people of these communities and several parts of the oil producing states have heard of the wealth that oil has brought but have hardly benefited from it. And so we've come today on behalf of the President Commander in Chief with cabinet colleagues and heads of relevant agencies to propose a new vision and to signpost a new era to the people of the oil producing communities of this state and Nigeria. The federal government will begin a partnership with the oil producing states, the local government with oil companies, the private sector and civil society organizations for the rapid development of these communities. We must convene an oil communities intervention to work out what can be done in the short to medium term and the long term possibility. We must focus on how to ensure that the people see the benefits of the wealth of the land. This new vision will define the future of the region. All exploitation by itself cannot suffice to assure our people of decent jobs and a decent income. It cannot. We must make our all producing communities hubs for petrochemical industries, small and large. We must make these communities hubs for refining and related activities. The Ministry of Petroleum Resources, in collaboration with the oil companies, is already, as the minister has said, working on a 40-point agenda, new initiatives for the oil producing communities of the Niger Delta. In particular, one of those is working with illegal refineries in all bearing communities to participate in modular refineries that will be established. 
There's no doubt at all that thermal stations, power stations, should be stationed here. It makes sense. The gas deposits are here. Very frequently, the way we take decisions does not always show that we are applying all of the common sense that we have. I think that a place that has gas deposits is a natural place, a natural location for power stations. The biggest benefit we can obtain, the biggest benefit we can obtain is to attract more investments to this region. I listened to my brother Udens, the president of the Georgia Youth Council, who is one of the most articulate advocates of the Niger Delta. Uh, of the Niger Delta Accord that I have yet listened to. I've also listened very carefully to the agricultural economist uh, Ziga Ayibakuro. A key point that they both make, of the several important points, is that the young men of Bielsa are entrepreneurs, that they are driven and that they are dynamic. Now this is critical. Societies are built on the resourcefulness and innovation and zeal of the people. They are not built on mere resources. Some societies do not even have any resources, but are much richer than societies that are endowed with resources. India does not have a drop of oil, but today it is the new home to the largest refineries, and it is the largest refiner of petroleum products in the entire world today, and it does not have one drop of oil. So I want to challenge the young professionals and entrepreneurs, some of whom have spoken today, to set up a Niger Delta Chamber of Commerce and Entrepreneurship Council. Let us have, let us have a Chamber of Commerce of the young men and women who are here. In that council, we can identify those involved in technology, in agriculture, in oil and gas, in manufacturing, and the professions. A chamber of commerce properly organized will attract the right kind of local and international partnerships and even funding. And I want to say that I'm prepared to work with you on that. Today, today new investments in the oil and gas sector have slowed down so badly because investors have a choice all over the world, even here in Africa. And they are, of course, scared to put their resources in a place that may be unstable. This is why our oil-producing communities must now refuse to participate in the destruction of pipelines and oil facilities. Aside from the loss of revenues, this also means further pollution of the land and aquaculture. We must not allow anyone to persuade us that we need to destroy investments, pollute our environment, to get a few benefits. That is cutting our nose to spite our faces. From 2015, Nigeria began to lose 1 million barrels of oil every day. Almost 60% of revenues lost to vandalization. This affected all of our states, and especially even the states in the Delta region. All the requests that Udens made, the road to brass, airports, can only be done when the federal government and the states earn revenue. We cannot destroy the sources of revenue and expect revenues. Development comes with revenue. Your Excellencies, Your Royal Majesties, and the great people of the Your Nation, we must make haste, and we must make haste quickly. Day by day, the world is moving away from oil. Other, other energy sources are getting cheaper and cheaper. America used to be the largest importer of our oil. Today, they do not import a drop of oil, of, of Nigerian oil, since they started producing from shale. Our oil now sells to Asia, but even they do not plan to depend on oil forever. China and Japan are now manufacturing electric cars. In Japan, there are more charging stations for cars than petrol stations now. We must be wise. We must use the oil for development now when it is still valuable. A guarantee of the future of well-being is to act today. It's time to set our sights on a great future for our people. 
it is time to do the hard work that is required. And I want to assure you that President Buhari and the government of the, of, of the Federation today is prepared to work with the people of the Niger Delta, prepared to work with the people of this state to ensure that we bring development here and to the entire Delta region. Once more, let me thank you most sincerely for the very warm welcome, and especially thank my dear brother, the governor of this state, Governor Sir Dixon. God bless my Elsa state. God bless Nigeria.